Okay, there. So um, I'm super excited. I have a, a moment today to visit with Rose. And Rose is a one, you're a good friend of mine. I like, I can call you my friend now. I feel like we're, we're more than acquaintances. So um, I'm honored to have you as my friend. And, uh, and what is cool about Rose contributing to helping with the training and us to understand how to work with people with Parkinson's is that Rose lives with Parkinson's, but you live with Parkinson's in, in a different aspect. Um, in fact, the vantage point you live with is that you are married to somebody who has Parkinson's. Um, so Rose, tell me a little bit about um, your husband. How long have you been married, you and John? And uh, a little bit about his journey with Parkinson's. Okay, well, we live here in the villages and we've been married for 54 years. So that's a long time to get to know someone, I guess, and to see oh, their wow. life change. Mm -hmm. And um, my husband has had Parkinson's for 15 years. Oh. And uh, so his diagnosis, he almost self-diagnosed himself because he was having some issues and he almost felt like maybe he had had a stroke or something. But his internist or doctor said, oh, no, don't worry about it. You're okay and everything. And he said to me, hey, I need to go to a neurologist because okay. there's something wrong. As it was, we went to the neurologist on his birthday and he was diagnosed on his birthday. Okay. So he was right. His instincts were correct that something was not right. I hear, I hear that quite a bit where people know before they know, before they're told. Right. Um, what was it that he was feeling? Well, um, sometimes there was just a hesitation in speaking, like okay. gathering your thoughts. And uh, the other time, what I noticed was when he was eating, he seemed to have a little difficulty with his fork. I mean, he never had an issue with anything like that before. Mm -hmm. And um, so he just thought, I just don't feel right. Yeah. And John was really active, correct? Very active. Yes, we've okay. always been, you know, outdoors people. We've okay. skied our whole life. He was a ski instructor mm -hmm. and um, did a lot of hiking, canoeing, backwater canoeing, horseback riding. We had horses for 30 years. Wow. Uh, he was very active with um, carriage driving competitively. So uh, it wasn't that he was sitting around doing nothing. Right, That's right. Not and so he, I mean, he knew he was quite capable of picking that fork up and putting it to his mouth. Exactly. So that delay would have been kind of a shocker. I can see. I yes. can yeah. Um, well, not only are you married with somebody with Parkinson's, but um, um, because you are a force of, what's the word? And, and advocacy for our Parkinson's community here in the villages. So mm -hmm. you are a volunteer with the Parkinson's Foundation. I know you have a background. Um, so share a little bit more about you, Rose, and, and your experience, not only with John, but with, the, with Parkinson's in our community. Okay. Um, well, first, I should say one of the reasons that we moved to the villages was because when we were just here visiting, you know, like snowbirds, um, we got acquainted with the support group and realized the extensive support network that exists here in the villages, which is unique to most places across the country. The second thing is that um, I'm a retired pharmacist. Okay. So I've worked in healthcare my entire life, 42 years of being a pharmacist mm -hmm. in various different positions. So um, I've always been you know, interested in lifelong learning Mm -hmm. So when I knew that John had Parkinson's, I knew that the most important thing was to learn as much as we could about uh, the disease and how to handle it. So um, that led me to investigating with the Parkinson Foundation, and I've been an ambassador or volunteer for them for three years. Okay. So when the other thing is when I did get involved with the support groups, we knew that there needed to be a way for us to communicate. So I'm kind of the director of communications, I guess, for another, yeah. want of another word. And I do put out a newsletter once a week on right. educational issues, events and whatever. Yeah. You are the connector. That's for sure. You know, and I, I know that um, if anyone wants to know anything about what's going on, um, you know, it's always Rose, find out with Rose, get on <laughs> Rose's email list, you know? And so, um, and I like that. I like that. Not only you're a connector, but you're a very strong woman and you're a voice and you, um, and that's really important. And that's part of why you're here. 
um, working together um, in our community for the same cause. And, um, and I've learned a lot from you. I've learned a lot from uh, the Parkinson's community. And uh, I feel like that that is where we could take all the certifications, all the training in the world, mm -hmm. but the real experts are the people who live either with physically with Parkinson's or living with somebody with Parkinson's. So with that being said, um, I'm just going to turn this over to you. And I would love for you to share um, from your heart, you know, when talk to me, like you're talking, well, I want to learn from you. So talk to me. Um, and let's just say even a brand new instructor who has a heart for sharing and yeah. helping people with Parkinson's. What are the things that we need to know? What are the key things that we need to know? And, and okay. oftentimes um, it's not just motor, you know, it's not just what we see. So, right. so you know, because you live the life, um, just share, you know, maybe um, just a few things, both no motor, non-motor of, of, of how we can learn and uh, be better at helping people with Parkinson's. Okay. Well, one of the first roles that we have as a volunteer is to help Parkinson's patients and their caregivers advocate for themselves and to be empowered with knowledge so that we involve not just them as far as how to live well with Parkinson's, but also healthcare professionals. And when we talk about healthcare professionals, you know, mostly we think of doctors and nurses and, you know, physical therapists and whatever. But I would say that it extends to training specialists like mm -hmm. yourself. So yes. there's a role for, for your and, and people in your role to learn how to help people live with Parkinson's. And I guess um, one of the most important things I think for people to know is that no two patients are alike. Mm -hmm. It's a progressive uh, neuro, neurological degenerative disease. So everyone you meet is going to be at a different level. Right. And one of the challenges sometimes is to find out what is that person capable of doing because they're not all, you know, alike. We all agree that exercise, in addition to medication, has been shown the only thing that will slow the progression of Parkinson's. It's not mm -hmm. going to cure it, but it will slow the progression. So the more we can encourage people to do that, the better off we are. The other thing is that um, to understand a little bit about Parkinson's itself, what does that really mean? Because the disease has been likened to an iceberg. In other words, what you see above the water is just a very small part of the diagnosis. Most of the symptoms are not visible. So they're underneath the water. Sure. So if you were to describe somebody with Parkinson's, you're looking at the iceberg as you see it. So you're gonna say, oh, they have a tremor or, and they may or may not have a tremor. My husband has never had a tremor. Um, their gait is affected or they have involuntary motion. That's what you see. So you say to yourself, okay, that's Parkinson's. I've defined it and I've defined that person, but it what lies beneath that gets more complicated because most Parkinson's patients experience an array of symptoms constipation, depression, fatigue, anxiety, swallowing problems, restlessness, rigidity, uh, pain. Right. Um, so all of these things, and most importantly, cognitive issues, which can affect memory or um, the ability to comprehend or to learn. So if you understand that, you can see why even instructing someone in an exercise becomes a challenge. Right. Because you're just teaching to a group. Um, one of the other things, um, and I think it, it's worthy to even point out to a class, is that medication on time, mm. according to the regimen, is the most important thing. So a patient should be planning their exercise routine in conjunction with when they're on, you know, the right. best time. And if they can't, as close as possible. And maybe during the class, they need to take their meds. So yeah. they should be encouraged to do that. Like, yeah. okay, you know, if it's time to take your meds, then, you know, take your meds because that's very important for the whole process to be effective. Right. Um, the other thing I would talk about is the impact of environment. Um, you know, it can be hot, cold temperatures. We normally think about environment, but it's the activity and what's going on that uh, can impact 
the Parkinson's patients. So their surroundings. Is it noisy? Is it is there a lot of activity going on? Are there a lot of other things that could be like a deterrent to their learning capability? Even music, although music can be very effective with with, with a lot of things, if it's too loud or it's you know obstructive, then that could be a deterrent for them because their sensory perceptions are you know cued. Yeah. Can I interrupt? Um, can I say yeah. something? Right? And, um, <clears throat> and so, and so, and, and I, I apologize. I hope you keep your train of thought because this is, okay. um, I'm writing lots of notes, but, um, the music thing. So it's almost one of those things where you have to juggle because it's like you said, it's really good. Right. Yes. But then almost being able to kind of like read the room, whether or not it's getting in the way. Mm -hmm. Um, and so what, and I've, again, I've got lots to learn, but one thing I've constantly recognized is that asking um, because as much as input, um, somebody with, with, uh, with Parkinson's, you know, they might have cognitive, they might have a lot of times it's slowness, <laughs> but it doesn't mean they are not aware of what's happening. Right. Oh, and absolutely. so constantly this like, Hey, checking the room, asking, looking at the facial expressions, seeing if they're catching on. And if that music is it getting in the way, um, cause well, it can and, thing and and it you, can have, be, you said a bad thing. You have to understand is that a person with Parkinson's, most people are over the age of 60. So we're all aging in place. So all the aging processes are going on as well. Maybe there's arthritis, maybe there's defective hearing, loss of hearing. So all of these things are impacting right. under this umbrella of Parkinson's. Yeah. That's something I've had to learn right, you know, early yeah. on too. Yeah. Just I like my loud music. And so I had to learn <laughs> like and, there's and, a time and, and there's yep, a place. There's a time and a place, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> And, you know, it's also fun to pick the music that brings out good feelings, you know, so, right. you know, I might want my heavy, crazy stuff, but something that brings out, you know, toe tapping and finger snapping um, right. is actually going to hit the heart a little bit differently because, uh, you know, just really actually goes back to reading the room and really um, understanding mm -hmm. and wanting to meet the people that you're totally. working with. Yeah. yeah. Good stuff. So carry it away. Keep going. All right. So I was going to say another thing that's important, especially as relating to, you know, your role in exercise and everything is hydration. And we know that hydration is important for all of us and, you know, to keep our bodies running smoothly and blood volume and all that, but particularly for a Parkinson's patient, because they have, it's, it's a muscle uh, degeneration as far as innervating. And so they need, um, their digestive system to be working properly. Swallowing could be a difficulty. And here's an interesting thing. Most Parkinson's patients never feel thirsty. Mm. So they have to be encouraged to drink. They have to be forced to drink. So I think while they're exercising and expending energy, it's important to do that because they don't realize that they may be dehydrated. Um, I guess the other thing would be kind of wrapped up all in how a person learns. And I think with the Parkinson's patient, they learn a little differently. For instance, repetition is very important. Um, repeating sequences, steps to certain exercises with clarity of instruction, you know, simple instruction, not complicated instructions. And um, attention spans can vary because of these cognitive issues. So repetition is, is important because it leads to less stress and less confusion. And because cognitive issues can come into it, um, learning may take longer, you know, it may be slower. It may be difficult to remember. Just because you did something one week, don't assume that the person is gonna remember it the next session. Right. So, you know, repeating and going over um, one thing the speech therapist, Jennifer Galb, that many people know, told me about this when we were talking about LSBT loud. And I said, oh, it'd be nice to change up all those voice exercises. And she said, well, you have to be careful with that because you want to keep the person interested. How do they stay interested? They catch on, they get it. They're able to do it successfully. Mm -hmm. That comes with repetition for the park. Right. Space. And I guess another thing, of course, I feel like I'm preaching to the choir because um, I know that you always stress warming up and everything. Well, stiffness and mm -hmm. muscle ache has a lot to do with the lack of flexibility. 
Right. So often I think a Parkinson's patient may not want to do exercise because they're not flexible enough to do it. So any exercise that could involve stretching and that kind of limbering up and certainly warming up before will just make it easier and, you know, more effective. Right. Okay. Um, one of the things that we talk about a lot in caregivers group and support groups is the inability to multitask. Mm. So, and it's not that it's insurmountable. It's just that it has to be worked on. For instance, doing two things at the same time, um, listening to the instruction and trying to do the exercise, that's multitask, right? Or you give an exercise that involves uh, some repetition with the feet, okay? And then you add arms to it, oh, two things happening at the same time. So you may notice that Parkinson's patient will start and then they'll just be doing one part of it because they can't manage doing both parts of it. Mm -hmm. Although with repetition, that could be, you know, that could be perfected more. So certainly I think that is, is a big issue. Right. Um, even talking or listening while you're trying to do the exercise can be difficult. You know, you're trying to do one part of it and then you as the instructor might be telling about the next step is, and it's like, oops, you know, now I got to go on to the next thing. So it gets complicated. It's the brain's working differently. That's mm -hmm. the point. It, and it's all part of sequencing to one thing after the other. There's difficulty with sequencing. You know, how does one thing follow the next? It can be a simple thing that you could understand, like um, taking something out of a cupboard and closing the cupboard door. <laughs> that's sequencing. Right. Well, that's something that non Parkinson's people, my husband struggles with it all. <laughs> I know. John just tells me I do it too. So I blame it on the Parkinson's. <laughs> Um, but I'm just, yeah, but I got you there, you know? Yeah. And I, and I think the very last thing is that we don't think, and even the Parkinson's patients, it's difficult for them to deal with this, that this sense of apathy, anxiety, depression is all part of the disease entity. Mm -hmm. So you're saying, well, how does that affect things? Well, you might not be interested in doing something. So in order to get the benefit of exercise, we have to get the person interested right. in exercise. Well, how do we do that? Well, if they have a good experience with it and they say, hey, that was kind of fun. I enjoyed it. Um, it makes them want to do it again right. or to get better or to improve it. So I think that apathy is also helped by um, group participation because think about it. I'm in the group. So I say, well, you know, there's little peer pressure, like, well, they could do it. I think I could do it. But more importantly, you're going over the exercise and they can't exactly remember how to do it, but they can see somebody else doing it. Ah, so sure. that encourages the person to be able to do it and to say, oh, okay, I remember. I remember. We have to turn to the left or turn to the right or whatever it is. Right. So I think in most of all of those things that I've been talking about, are all under the water in that iceberg. There are all those things that you don't see and you do not think about. Right. You know? Yeah, it's true. It's very true. And uh, and it's all about, you know, I know that there is times where early on when I, um, you know, have made lots of mistakes of just looking at what's above the water, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and learn along the way. And so I guess even it's always a learning process. Even you as, you know, after 49 years or how many years, 52 years, 54, 54. <laughs> well, you learn thinking, something new every day, right? Right. Right. And you do. And, you know, and I just think that people change life changes and, and obviously the condition changes, you know, so yeah, exactly. um, if we get a chance to be one hour, once a week with somebody, we're going to be, you know, we're, we're not going to learn nearly as much as we need to. So we're always going to be mm -hmm. learning, you know, more and more every week. Um, and one aspect, um, you know, this is great, great information. One thing that I learned, um, I think that makes the experience really special for each person is to realize they're not defined by their Parkinson's like John, you know, that he's his experience in the past, you mm -hmm. know, um, and, uh, and finding out what I, you know, maybe this is like the secret sauce of, of that apathy, that depression or that anxiety mm -hmm. is, is finding out who, who the, who each person is, um, yes. individually learning, of course, their name, their, um, mm -hmm. and then, 
always um, making them feel um, or searching for ways of helping them to still see value, still feel um, all that good stuff before Parkinson's, you know, um, like I cannot mm -hmm. wait to meet with, uh, to sit with John and find out about his skiing instructing and, and cause he did a lot of it, you know, he worked with a lot of adaptive clients and I, I'm yes, thrilled to death about looking, learning that. And so one area I would love to add to your list is simply really, really, even in a large group, you can learn mm -hmm. everybody, you know, and you can take time out to individually make everybody feel special and a part of this and unique. Right. And, and I think asking for input and feedback yeah. is important because so many people who have Parkinson's tend to withdraw. Sure. So they're not so anymore, and no matter what their personalities were before, they're not so um, apt to offer something up front. And sometimes yeah. there are problems, um, you know, expressing themselves. So there's voice problems or, yeah. you know, the, and again, it all goes into that cognitive issue. But um, I think when they are asked questions, they're more responsive than volunteering us. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's fantastic. Now, I don't think this will be the last time we have conversations, Ruth. So, um, Rose, I mean, um, so, um, and, uh, and I love, I love, 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 um, the, you know, the, the diversity of, of information. And now here's one more. Okay. If, you know, we are expanding, um, in Genesis, mm -hmm. our, our Parkinson's programming right. now, um, and as we expand, can I call on you on sure. a regular basis? Oh, yes. <laughs> you're, yeah, you sure. have to say yes, because I'm putting you on camera and saying, hey, you know, I yeah. mean, just like, you know, and, sure. and I, you know, I've learned something new about you today. I didn't realize you were a pharmacist. And oh, uh, didn't. I didn't. Yeah. Um, yeah, you didn't know that Bob and I are both pharmacists. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we got two farmers um, in, mm -hmm. in, in the house, you know, but uh I, yeah. So I'm sure you both sharpen each other in a huge way. And, and what a right. blessing for, um, for your situation that you, because medication yes. is such a big deal with Parkinson's medication. Exactly. Medication, that, um, that really sets you guys up for success. And so, mm -hmm. so what you have to offer to, to Genesis as we grow this and as we try to have um, a positive impact in our communities, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I just feel like these conversations are just going to continue on and continue okay. on. So I sure, really, really. Okay. I just want to say one thing that we're always talking to support group and, you know, especially the foundation, they always talk about, you know, what type of exercise is best and aerobic uh -huh. exercise and this, that, and the other yeah. thing. And so we finally come up with the simplest answer, the exercise that you enjoy and are willing to do. I'm right? going to do <laughs> the ones yes. you show up for yeah. the ones you show up for. Absolutely. I love that. And, uh, and, and that's what we're trying to create, you know, even a diverse mm -hmm. kind of system, our group and um, where somebody finds something they love every time they're there exactly. and, uh, and your involvement and your help. And the camaraderie, the socialization oh, is my. very, very important. So to that's know that you're not alone is huge. Yep. Yeah. And that's yeah. why this support group and the community is so good here because it's real easy to find out, you know, there's, you're not alone and, uh, yes. and offering that escape once in a while is really a neat, neat thing to do. Okay. All right, young lady. Well, thank you for your time. Thank and you. my uh, pleasure. And we'll be talking again soon. Okay. Thank you. All right, Rose. See ya. Bye.